Let's take a look at our top selections. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. Five stakes races on tap for you at Gulfstream Park on Saturday. We kick it off with race number four of the $75,000 Dania Beach Stakes. Let's take a look at this field of three-year-olds going a mile on the turf, a field of seven. But as you see from the morning line, it's a pretty wide open race with the four, like the Salt Shaker, already a stakes winner on synthetic, stakes placed on turf, hoping to rebound from a dull performance on dirt. And I wouldn't hold that race against them. Yeah, I'm not sure what the idea was there. I'm trying him on dirt last time, but it didn't work out. He's a better horse um, on this surface. Um, we'll see how the betting shakes out, Dan. I guess I won't be surprised if he's the favorite. He's already stakes placed. But I feel like the two horses drawn to the um, the one and two posts towards the inside are going to take money in here. And both of those horses have tactical speed as well as we throw up the Time Form U.S. pace projector. I agree with Time Form U.S., Kentucky Pharaoh, the number two. Uh, he went gate to wire last time out, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'd expect Julian Leparu to put that horse on the lead. Law to speed should be close to the pace. Maybe Fighting Force could try to work out a pocket trip for Todd Pletcher. Uh, I think these horses can get good trips from close to the pace. Uh, I do too. It'll be interesting to see what Kentucky Pharaoh does. He had, you know, just no trouble getting to the early lead in his turf debut last time. Um, they did not make him race up there. Um, and so in a lot of ways, he just took advantage, but it did look like he had some, you know, pretty easy speed in that spot. So I won't be surprised if he's on the lead again. The Fighting Force is a $400,000 son of Air Force Blue who graduated last time out over course and distance on December the 5th. Let's watch that race right now. Got right up close to the pace as the favorite for Todd Pletcher. He's on the outside right now. He's going to grind down this thing to win with a 70 buyer speed figure. A good solid effort. The horse really hasn't run poorly in any of his three outings. Yeah, I thought he ran well in here. You can see here in the replay, though, Dan, I mean, there's really nothing happening behind this horse. Um, he just got himself into a good position. Once he put away the horse that was on the lead at the top of the stretch, there's nothing for him to worry about in there. Um, nobody was doing any real running behind him. So that concerned me a little bit. I, I feel like he might have beat um, beaten a bad field last time. Um, but as you said, he's run well in all of his races. I think he's a major player in here. Now, the progeny of American Pharaoh really seemed to do well on the turf, and no exception, the two Kentucky Pharaoh, who made his grass debut in this race at Gulfstream Park on December the 19th. And as Mike mentioned, he showed easy speed. Now, there's no running going on behind him. I wonder what he beat, but visually, I love the way he finished this off. Me too. That's that's what I liked about it. I mean, he had such a soft trip on the lead that it was hard to get too excited about it. But he really ran through the stretch here. It almost felt like he was toying with that field. And, you know, the other thing that you like about this horse, Dan, is you mentioned the American Pharaohs um, just being better on turf. This horse is all grass. So even though he didn't do any running on dirt in his first two starts, this is the surface that he's bred for. His dam um, was a really, really good turf horse who, you know, won multiple graded stakes and earned over a million dollars. Um, so this is the surface that he was meant for, and he really upped his game when they switched him over. Those horses are recent maiden winners. A two-time winner is the number three, Cave Hill, who just scored at Tampa Bay Downs, moving from dirt to turf. This is a horse that seems to appreciate some distance. Let's watch his win at Tampa last time out. He's the gray horse, and he's on the outside, and he's going to run this field down. And I thought he did okay to do so. It didn't seem like there was a ton of pace in this race. Law to Speed is also in here. He's in between horses. And Cave Hill, you can see, he's a little bit green on his left lead. He's just better, though, than the seventh. Than, uh, a lot of speed. Yeah, he was just better. Um, he was last early. The pace really wasn't that fast. So I thought his rider did a good job just to get him closer to the leaders um, up the back stretch. And the horse did the rest through the stretch. I can't say that I'm, you know, blown away by any of this horse's races, Dan, um, but he could certainly improve again. A horse with the fig is your morning line favorite. The four, like a salt shaker, he earned an 82 buyer speed figure over yielding ground, two back in the uh, wad. And we turn into the stretch, and I need like a salt shaker in this race at 15 to 1, Mike. And boy, did he get a trip. <laughs> Jose Ortiz got him in the pocket. The rail opens up. He shoots on through. And I'm doing the hula dance right here because I'm going to cash. And no, I'm not because Step Dancer is actually going to come through inside of like a salt shaker and beat like a salt shaker. He ran well. He got a really nice trip. He did. They both got really nice trips. They both rode the inside the entire way. It was surprising that um, Jose, once he made the front in there, he came right off the inside and, and let the winner come through um, and take over from him in there. This horse ran fine. His his form prior to that was good as well, Dan. Um, you know, we'll kind of see if he can back it up. I could go either way on this horse. If he's going to be the favorite, and I'm not sure that he is, I, I don't think I would be betting on this horse. Um, but if he drifts a little bit, I can see that he, I can see him being interested in here. 
Omaha City is the number five. He raced six times as a two-year-old, all before October the 1st. So I don't mind him getting a little bit of a break coming into this race. He won his maiden a stakes race last time out. Let's watch the Hollywood Beach going five furlongs over good going at Gulfstream Park. And Omaha City is on the outside in the blue silks. And he's also a little bit green as these two-year-olds are. He lugs in a little bit once he changes leads, but he straightens himself out and he's on his way. From a pedigree standpoint, this distance shouldn't be an issue, but he's going to have to improve from a speed figure standpoint. He's just going to have to get faster. That's not um, impossible, though, as you mentioned, Dan. They did a lot of racing early with him, and now they've given him some time. Um, so he could take a step forward, and here he's bred to stretch out. I liked that win from him there. It wasn't fast, um, but he came from off it. He was a little green through the stretch in there. I can see this horse improving. Is It's a Gamble best sprinting? His Both of his lifetime wins have come in late running fashion in sprints. I think he's run fine in his two races. The excuse in the award, I think, was the yielding ground. And while the top two finishers saved ground all the way, It's a Gamble was basically in a three-wide trip for most of it. Let's watch It's a Gamble's last race. He didn't break very well. It actually worked out well for him because he got a great closer's ride by Johnny V. Down towards the inside, he saved ground all the way around the turn. Now he's going to alter course to the outside. It looks like he's got no shot, but once he switches over to his right lead, he comes a flying. Yeah, this has been the case in both of his sprint starts, Dan. Um, just making up huge amounts of ground at the end of his races with really big finishes. It does sort of feel like, at least at this stage of the game, he's a turf sprinter um, and a closing turf sprinter at that. Um, I would just, you know, maybe caution people a little bit um, about his two route races. I don't think he ran as poorly as maybe it looks in those races. You mentioned the excuses for his award which I agree with wholeheartedly. And I didn't even think he ran that poorly at Monmouth when they went the two-turn mile. He was making up ground at the end of that race too. I I, I would have no um, problem giving this horse another chance stretching out here if he's the right price. I agree because it's not like we're stretching him out to a mile and an eighth or even a mile and a sixteenth. It's a mile. He's by English Channel. He's at least bred to get it. Loudest speed completes the field. We saw him get run over by Cave Hill, but this horse has run fine in his last three races, and he should get a close, uh, a good trip from close to the pace. The question is, can he quicken and hold off the closers? He's going to have to move forward. Yeah, I thought he was pretty tough to take based on his turf debut last time. Well, let's take a look at our top picks for the Dania Beach Stakes at Gulfstream Park on Saturday. We both like Kentucky Fair. I just like the way he finished that race off. We're going to find out how good he is because he's stepping up into a, a much tougher spot. Uh, the six in here is going to be the one he might have to hold off. That's it's a gamble. Yeah, I almost put it's a gamble on top. And I could still bet him, Dan, if he's the right price in here. We'll see if he drifts it all off that morning line. I, I have no problem giving him, you know, one more chance stretching out. Although I think it, you know, it's easy to make the case, though, that he's better sprinting at this point. Same superfecta, different order. Mike's going 2614. I'm going 2461. It is the Dania Beach Stakes with an approximate post time of 135 Eastern. Good luck.